afternoon, viewers from all over the world. Welcome to Freedom Hour on this beautiful day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Pastor Sarah. You are most welcome to Freedom Hour. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Amen. God bless you and your loved ones. I am so excited to come your way again today, this beautiful Saturday. The weather is nice in the city of London. I don't know where you are, but wherever you are, this is the day that God has given you. Be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. Let's take a moment to pray before we go into today's topic, which is, is a matter of investment. It is a matter of investment. God has invested so much in you, in you and I. Every great nation invests in their people. They are great investors in their people. They learned it from God. They copied it from God. God is the first person that invested in mankind. He made mankind and invested in mankind. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, fruitfulness. He invested so much in man and every great nation copied that very thing from God Almighty. Amen. So let's pray before we go into the message. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for their loved ones. I thank you because you have preserved them. I thank you because you opened their hearts, Holy Spirit, this afternoon and the word will fall on good ground. I thank you because you will increase their wisdom, their knowledge, their understanding and their thirst for you. I thank you because their lives will never remain the same again after this broadcast. Everyone they come across, they will invest in them because the spirit of valuing human being will come upon them even more in the name of Jesus. They will become more and more like Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. It's a matter of investment. It is a matter of investment. Amen. So we are going to go straight into the word. It is a matter of investment. And God is the first person in the book of Genesis, in the book of creation, that invested in mankind. Genesis 2 you can find the story there when God created man, he invested in man. He made everything available for man to function. That is from food. And he also told them, if you eat this, you will live. And if you eat that, you will die. So we all know now the knowledge of good and of good and evil. But God did not just place man in the garden without providing for them that which will keep them alive, that which will keep their body healthy, that which will keep their mind sound. He invested in all of that, and that is what every great nation does. They provide for their people, and they invest in their people. Today in the United Kingdom, every evening at 7 o'clock due, due to the pandemic, we clap for the NHS. Every evening, we clap for the NHS. Well done, NHS. Thank you, NHS. It's because the nation of United Kingdom has invested in their health care. They have invested in their doctors, in their nurses, in their health care workers. They have invested in their pilots. They, are, they have invested in their people. That is what makes a nation great. A nation without people is not a nation. But a nation that is great is great because the people in the nation are great. Their brains are the best brains. That's why people send their families from Africa to India to go for transplants because they have the best doctors there, but they invested in their people. You must be able to make your own garden of Eden green and place value on your people. And that starts with us as individuals. As individuals, that, st that starts with us. We as individuals make a great nation. So everyone that comes across you or that you come across, you must be able to invest in them. You tell people on social media, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook, follow my page. But what are they really following you for? Now, the first point I have here is Matthew 4. I have six points for you today to see that this is God's way of investing, impacting, impacting in people and also making people great. He will always use one person for another. 
Amen. He will always use one person for another. People don't just come your way or into your life so that they will remain the same. Jesus said to Peter in Matthew 4, 19, Peter and his brothers, Jesus was going and he met them. And he said to them, Matthew 4, verse 19, he said to them, follow me and I will make you. That's a whole message on its own. Follow me and I will make you. The people that are following you, what are they becoming? Whom are they becoming? I will make you fishers of men because that's their destiny. That is who Peter was supposed to be in the first place. He's a disciple that didn't realize that that was his life calling. He didn't know. But at some point when he met Jesus, Jesus said to him, follow me. Him and his brothers, and I will make you, I will make you better. I will not leave you the same. I will make you great. I will make you follow me. Now it's a process. People don't just follow you for following you sick. They don't follow you for watching you sick because you are beautiful or because you are handsome or because simply God has called you. God has called you for a purpose. When they follow you, who are they becoming? Follow me and I will make you. And Peter became this great disciple from this fisherman that couldn't even read or write. He increased his capacity. He, he, he became spiritually fat, strong. He became intelligent that even the people that were so intelligent and learned in the day of Pentecost, they said, God, these guys that can't even read and write are speaking like this. That is a, as a result of following Jesus. They became whom they were created to be. They became better people. They became people that impacted the nation of Israel. They became people that brought people to God, closer to God. They became people that opened the eyes of people, destroyed ignorance out of their lives. Follow me and I will make you. Every individual that you come across or that in, comes into your life, what do they say about you? What are you investing in them? What are you investing in them? Every individual that comes your way, what exactly are you investing in them? That is something that you need to think about. What are you investing in people that come across you? It is important that you are conscious of that fact amen second timothy 1 verse 5 second timothy 1 verse 5 peter a paul had the opportunity of coming across this young man called timothy he met timothy when timothy was very young and he invested in timothy he 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 played the role of a father to timothy he didn't, he didn't abuse the fact that Timothy was following him, that God brought Timothy his way. He took his time and invested knowledge in Timothy and encouraged him, Timothy, don't despise your youth. All the things that I've taught you that you have received by the laying on of hands. Be an example even to the adults. I have taught you. I have invested in you. Everything God has invested in me. And Timothy could continue the race even after Paul was gone. And Paul remained great. Paul received honor. He could say, Timothy, I am your father. You can have many instructors, many mentors. But I am your father, I, Paul. The reason why Paul could say that Paul knew Timothy all the way from his house. He knew his mother. He knew his grandmother. He knew, the ba he knew his spiritual background. He knew everything about Timothy. He's been, Timothy has, had been following him for a long time. And he knew all that he has invested in Timothy. And that brought honor to his life. He could call Timothy my son someone just comes your way you don't know them from anywhere you have not invested anything in them you have not taught them anything and you are so quick to call them son daughter in ministry it does it doesn't work like that paul did the right things that god called him to do he invested in timothy knowledge everything that god has taught him he invested it in timothy and that is God's will for our lives, that when people come across us, we invest in them. I told God, I said, God, 
when I am when I'm really established in ministry, every young person that will come my way, that I know that your hand is upon their lives for ministry, I will invest in them to the best of my ability because we must carry on. It is from generation to generation. And Paul was not intimidated because Jesus says, greater works shall you do. The people you invest in, the people that are following you, the people that are your sheep, the, even the people that you meet on a daily basis, they should become better people because of you. And they should even be becoming better than you. Whatever you know how to do that you taught them how to do, they should master it better than you. Amen. That is the will of God. Number three, Second Kings 2, verse 12. Eli taught Samuel what he knew. It was an opportunity given to Eli. It was an opportunity given to him. This young man called Samuel, the mother brought him to the temple because she promised God that if you give me a son, I will give him back to you and he will serve you all the days of his life. And, and so Hannah took Samuel to, to, to the temple. And when she took him to the temple, she handed him over to Eli. That is a responsibility that God entrusted, entrusted into the hands of Eli. Eli did not abuse it. He did not fail God. He did not fail man. He trained Samuel to become a greater, a greater prophet than he was. Samuel did greater things. Samuel anointed two great kings in the nation of Israel. Eli never did that. Eli was not even as known as Samuel because of the people, the kind of caliber of people God used Samuel to anoint. But you see, Eli wasn't intimidated when God began to call Samuel and Samuel didn't even recognize the voice of God because he was a young man. He didn't know the voice of God. And he went to Samuel and said, Samuel, Samuel, did you call me in his innocence? Samuel did not say, oh my God, God is calling this boy. Oh, so that means when he grows, he's going to, you know, he's going to be this and he's going to be that. And he became intimidated and jealous and just abandoned the boy. No, he had a good heart. His, the Bible says the thoughts that I think towards you, that's what God said. They are a thought of peace, of good and not of evil. And that's the kind of thought that, that that's the kind of thought that Eli had towards Samuel. And that's the kind of thought that we should have towards everyone that God brings across us. And so Eli told Samuel, Samuel, if you hear that voice again, go back to bed. You are my son. Go back to bed. I love you. But if you hear that voice again, say, Lord, here I am. And Samuel did exactly what Eli told him. And God spoke to Samuel and told him the things that he had called him to do and, and, and many more. You can read the story for yourself. And Eli even said, Samuel, what did God tell you? He trusted the fact that this guy has the call of God also in his life and God has begun to speak with him. And so I must respect him and carry on teaching him until my last day. He is the one that is taking over from me. He invested in him. That was an opportunity given to him. He didn't abuse him because he was staying with him. He didn't treat Samuel differently from how he treated his own children. He invested even more in Samuel because the Bible records that Samuel's uh, Eli's sons didn't do very well. But you could see that that which was not his own flesh and blood, he treated well. And that is the will of God for our lives, that when he brings people across us, we should try as much as possible to get them to the place where God wants them to be. Amen. Amen. Number four, Naomi and Ruth. Naomi and Ruth are so beautiful. Ruth left her place of birth to follow, follow her mother-in-law even though her husband had died. She saw that the mother-in-law is in distress. She's lonely. How can she leave this elderly lady all by herself to go back to her hometown? She said, no, I will follow you. She remained loyal. But you know, I, 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 I'm so proud of Naomi and I love this story. Naomi trained Ruth very well and Ruth became so great. She met this guy called Boaz and Boaz was an influential man 
But you see, Ruth on her own wouldn't she would have missed it. She wouldn't have known how to how to hand how to attract Boaz or the kind of qualities that a virtuous woman needs. But Naomi taught her, this is how you must do in the night. This is how you must behave when you go to the field. And she taught her and invested that which her own mother taught her into this young lady. And this lady remarried this guy. She remarried Boaz. God opened her heavens. But because she was taking instruction from a woman that did not abuse the fact that she had left all her family back home in Moab. She did not abuse that fact. She took care of Ruth very well and invested the knowledge that God has given her over the years into Ruth with a good heart and with a good intention. She had no other motives. She had no other motives. And that is the will of God for you and I that we do the same naomi did very well there are some you, there are some elderly women i know and and this is a true story there are some elderly women i know god brought young women their way they use these young girls for pros prostitution or introducing these young girls to their ex-boyfriends or to their husbands friends that are just looking for girls to use that's that's abuse and that is what god calls wickedness and evil god brought them your way so that you can teach them how not to fall into the wrong hands how not to become what you would have become how not to make the same mistakes you made that is why god brought them your way because you have something to help them shape their future not to abuse them and not to use them as prostitutes Let's be like Naomi and invest in the young women that God brings our way so that they get to the place of fulfilling their God-given purpose in every area of their lives. Amen? That's the kind of women we should be. Number five. Number five. We are on number five. King David. King David. King David came across this king called Saul that God had anointed. Saul had the opportunity, even when God had left him, to invest in David, to teach David not to make the same mistakes that he made while he fell from his throne, Why God rejected him. He had the opportunity to teach David, but he did not. He had the opportunity to tell David, this is the mistake I made. And now the spirit of God has left me. But you that is coming after me, you don't have to make that same mistake. Be better than me. Be greater than I am. Do better. Don't, don't disappoint God. Don't fail God. And don't fail the people of Israel like I did. He did not. Jealousy and intimidation came in. The spirit of jealousy is a terrible spirit. The spirit of intimidation is a terrible spirit. It is not the spirit of God. It is not the spirit of God. He didn't, he didn't invest in David. And so he failed even more because he still had the opportunity to do better and to teach David not to make the mistakes he did and why God rejected him. But he did not. So he failed. He missed that opportunity also. It is a beautiful thing if we can actually get to the place where we teach people that this mistake that I did, you came across me for a reason. Don't make that same mistake. Be better than me. Be greater than me. It is not a crime. Every great nation starts with one person and it starts with the, that one person investing everything that God has embedded in them into another person. Take time with people. Help people. You know, help people become better. Help people become greater. Help people. People are the people that make a nation. When you hear every great nation, they are proud of their people because they have invested in their people. They don't run from, from, from United Kingdom to go to Liberia for, for treatment. They trust their own people because they know that they have invested in their doctors very well and their doctors are up to the tax because they have invested in them. 
they have invested in them. So you will be able to trust the people that God brought your way. You can say, yes, that lady knows how to pray because I have taught her. I have taught her the word of God. That lady knows how to cook because I have taught her. That, that, that young man is a, great, is a great engineer. I was his mentor when he was, in, when he was in, in uni because now I am an engineer. He will become even better than I am. That's how it goes. That is why God brings people across us, not to gossip with them, not to tear others down, not to just waste time with each other but to really impact in one another. That is what makes a great nation and that's what pleases the heart of God and he can trust you with more people. He can bring more people across you. You are a manager and the people that are in your, that, are, that you are managing at work, you must always be at work because none of them can do it like you do. Then you are doing something wrong. You must get to that place where you can trust them, where you teach them that which you know, that even when they outgrow that place where they are and they get a better job somewhere else, they can always refer to you when they say, wow, where did you learn this? You are really capable, you are strong, you know your, you know your stuff. They can say, my former manager taught me. You will always be relevant, you will never be forgotten, and that will bring honor to you. Don't be intimidated. Don't think when you invest in people, they, they, they will become better than you. They should become better than you because greater works shall we do that came after Jesus. Now, the last but not least, Moses. Even though Moses could not enter the promised land because of the mistakes he did, because of his own shortcoming, his anger issue, you know what God did? God told him to encourage Joshua. They, Moses encouraged Joshua. He encouraged the young man that was coming after him that would take the people, continue the journey, and take the people of Israel into the promised land. He encouraged him. He wasn't intimidated. He wasn't jealous. He wasn't angry. But with a good heart and a good intention, he encouraged him to go and take on the battle taking the people to the promised land. Jesus said, greater works shall we do. Everyone you come across, they should, you should get them to that place to do greater, to become greater. And that will make a great nation. Wherever you are in the world, endeavor to be somebody that will always impact in people and invest in them so that it will become that which God has called them to be. And you can be a person that God can trust with mankind, with his people, to embed, to, to, to breath greatness into them. Amen. My name is Pastor Sarah. This is Freedom Hour. I just want to say a word of prayer with us, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word today. We thank you because we are people of investment. We will invest in our people. It is a matter of investment. Everyone you bring our way, every child, every adult you bring our way, every child you entrust into our homes, Father, we invest in them, we train them well, we invest our money, our time, our knowledge, and everything that you have given us into them so that they will become better citizens, so that they will not become inmates in the name of Jesus, so that they will become the people that you have called them to be, the doctors, the lawyers, the the engineers, the pastors, the teachers, the mothers, the fathers. Oh Lord, we thank you because we will be people that will impact in people so well that it will become citizens that are even better and greater than us. And you will be proud of them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you have not given your life to Jesus, this is the day. Today is the day of salvation. You have been hearing about Jesus all your life or you've just come across my voice and you are hearing Jesus for the first time, whatever the case may be, Jesus is knocking at the heart, the door of your heart. And he says, I want to come in. I love you. I died for you. I rose again for you so that you can live in victory and your name will be written in the book of life that after you leave this world, you will spend eternity in heaven and not in hell that is meant for the devil and his demons. 
It is not meant for human beings. Heaven is meant for human beings. And that's where Jesus wants you to be with him at the end of your life. And he will help you do that. Just say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, my master, and my savior. I receive you as my Lord, master, and savior. Holy Spirit, help me to walk with God. Help me to do the will of God all the days of my life and guide me through life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. This is Freedom Hour. Once again, you are welcome. Have a blessed week ahead in the name of Jesus. This week, favor shall be yours every day of this week coming. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Pastor Sarah is my name. God bless you.